If you have ever spent more than 10 minutes trying to reassemble your Twisby 530, 540, 580, or Mini, then you definitely need to watch this video. Hey, hey, I'm Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company and Inc. Nouveau. And if you have a Twisby 530, 540, 580, or Mini, or possibly pen in the future that doesn't exist yet, uh, chances are you can benefit from watching how I disassemble and reassemble the piston mechanism on these pens. The mechanisms on all these four pens are basically identical. Now, I'm going to demonstrate with a 580, but I'm going to show you some tips and some tricks about how to pull the pen apart and actually stick it back together reliably so that you can be confident doing it and knowing that you're going to get so that it fits back together properly and that you're going to get maximum ink capacity just as the pen came out of the box. This is the Twisby 580 pen. It's Twisby's flagship pen. It's actually very similar in design to the 540 and the 530, which are both older models of this pen. And though there are some minor differences, uh, as far as what I'm going to show you here today, the concepts are going to be exactly the same for this pen as for those other two and for the Twisby Mini as well. So, basically what I want to show you is when you have this pen, it's a piston filling pen, so you've got this end cap here that you're unscrewing and it's causing your piston to move up and down. That's how the pen fills. Okay, if you're familiar with piston pens at all, very kind of conventional design, nothing too crazy going on here. Uh, just usually you're not encouraged to take it apart and really mess with it. Uh, Twisby actually does give instructions with their pen about how to uh, remove it and all that stuff. Um, and they actually have a parts list too. Um, this is some older instructions for the 540, so they include separate instructions here for the um, 580. Uh, but parts are not different for what I'm going to talk about here, which is mainly the back mechanism area. So if you want to clean or maintain your pen in any way, uh, they include this wrench um, and they also include a little bottle of silicone grease. Uh, that's used to lubricate the different parts of the pen, the screw, uh, you know, the piston part, the seal. Uh, and I personally, you know, th I find the Twisby silicone grease definitely gets the job done. Uh, and there's plenty of it to last you a little while. It's a little liquidy for my taste. I'm used to um, the stuff that I carry, which is uh, more of a paste. Uh, really either one will get the job done. So don't feel like you have to go buy any. If you are buying the pen, you can definitely use the Twisby stuff that they provide for you. Uh, and they're the only pen company I know that provides that silicone grease with the exception of Edison with some of their pens. Uh, but anyway, that's really not of much consequence. Uh, so they include a Twisby wrench, which is about a seven millimeter wrench. It's about a millimeter thick, uh, just in case you're wondering there. And the way that you take this thing apart is you uh, use the, grab the end cap, unscrew it all the way so that your piston is all the way down, and then you insert the wrench in place. There's a couple notches there right in the side, so it may not fit in in the first place you put it, but it'll kind of lock down into place when you get it in the right spot. Uh, both ends of the wrench are exactly the same as well. Uh, and then you unscrew it in a clockwise motion, like so. So here I'm holding the pen, turning the wrench around, or if you want to hold the wrench, if you turn the pen, in the opposite direction counterclockwise, then it'll unscrew. Because if you think about it, it's the two different parts of the pen you're turning. Uh, I'm sure that's clear as mud, but uh, you unscrew it until the threads are loose from the body of the pen, and then you pull the mechanism out. Now there are technically five parts to this Twisby mechanism. Okay? The plastic part, or the sorry, the rubber part on the end here is called, they call it the piston. A uh, piston seal works just as well. So there's that. There's the screw, which removes right there. You remove this part. This part is called the connector. Here you have the screw bolt, and then you have the end cap. Okay, so that's the terms I'm going to use in this video. This also be called a filler knob. You can have this called a piston rod. There's a lot of different names for it, but that's what Twisby says in their official literature. So that's what the terms I'll try to use here. Okay, so I've got all these different parts. Really, there shouldn't be much need for you to take the piston off of the screw. So I'll leave that on for the entirety of the demonstration here. Um, the way that this thing is actually working is that 
the, the working part of the mechanism is that the screw bolt fits into the screw. Sorry, the screw bolt fits into this the screw fits into the screw bolt. Uh, you've got outer threads on the screw, you've got inner threads on the screw bolt, and the two are mating up together. And then when you twist them, they are moving in and out of each other, and that is what is giving you that up and down motion of the piston as it's going in the pen. Okay? So all that's happening inside your connector. When you have the connector, there's one open end and there's one kind of flatter end with you know, this funny shape inside, and that's where your screw is going to fit into. So it's really kind of hard to do it the wrong way um, because the parts aren't going to fit but in one direction. Um, the screw bolt just kind of fits in here. It's free spinning, uh, you know, no problem. And then you've got your end cap, which screws onto the back end of your connector. Okay? So it's pretty simple. So when you want to reassemble this thing, and, you know, I get a lot of questions about people that don't know how to do this right. So that's kind of the whole point of this video is the reassembly. Take your end cap and screw it on all the way until it stops. Okay, don't ratchet it down because you just want to get a little bit of resistance and then you stop. Uh, at that point, you've got your screw bolt inside there. Now the screw bolt is not going to move when you have the, piston, the uh, end cap all the way down. So you're going to take your screw and try to put it in, but it's going to stop you pretty much right away because that screw bolt is not turning. What's turning it is these um, little up and down you know things here inside your end cap that's what's grabbing on to your screw bolt and allows it to spin and move the mechanism <clears throat> so I've got the cap end cap all the way on I've got the screw going into the connector like that and if you think about it when this thing is all the way like that this is as far in as it's going so the only way as you unscrew the end cap is for it to go out because it's kind of going in the opposite direction of how you're screwing it. Does that make sense? Maybe not. But anyway, it'll make more sense when I show you. So as I'm unscrewing this, the screw bolt is turning inside and it's moving in an opposite direction that's forcing the screw away from the end cap, okay? But since I'm so close to the end here, there's not much f distance for it to travel before it clicks because I'm basically hitting the next thread. I'm kind of skipping a thread. So I'm gonna unscrew it just a little bit and you, you're gonna see and hear a little jolting click like that, okay? And what I did is I just skipped over to the next thread because I ran out of thread and then if I screw it back in place, it's going to go a little bit further in than it did before. I'm going to try it again. See? There. It just clicked again, and now it's going to go in a little bit further. What I'm doing when I'm holding this is I'm holding the connector piece, the black piece, with my ring finger and my thumb. Uh, sorry, my middle finger and my thumb. I'm pushing down on the piston with my index finger, and I'm unscrewing the knob with my other hand. So the goal of what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get it so that the piston is all the way down onto the connector. That is the position that it should be in when the pen is all the way closed and the end cap is all the way tightened onto the back of the pen. And that way, when I unscrew it, the piston will go all the way down. When I screw it back in, it'll come all the way back up and I'll get maximum ink capacity in my pen. So I'm going to repeat this clicking motion. and so that I am moving it down just one notch further each time until I get it to where the piston is more or less mated up to the end of the connector. So I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do another one. So I got a couple more to go. Okay, almost there. Bam. Okay, that's right about the position I want. So I've got a little bit of space there. If I go too far, then I'm not going to have any space there. Uh, but I went just far enough because my piston, my end cap is hitting the end, and I'm ready to thread this thing back into the pen. Okay, so there's a couple ways you can do it. You can try doing it just with um, the knob as it is here, 
but what's going to happen is it's going to want to unscrew a little bit inside the pen because basically the motion that it needs to thread into the pen at this point is counterclockwise, which is the same direction that your filler knob is or your uh, your end end cap is going to want to unscrew as it moves the mechanism down. So you are probably just going to unscrew it enough to be able to fit your wrench in there. And then you can actually get the thing into the pen. So you just kind of push it in, screw it counterclockwise, and now it's threaded into the pen. And then the real test of whether I did it right, there you go. That's about right. So uh, I'm going to have a little bit of space here between the end of the piston and the connector. Uh, but I should be getting some resistance when I screw the end cap onto the back of the pen. That should be what stops it. If I have moved the screw in too far, then my cap is going to be free spinning. And I'll show you how that works here. So I just pulled this thing out of the pen. I'm going to keep going with what I just did to move it in one notch further. Okay, so I clicked it in one notch further. This is going to now be too far. So now I still have a tiny bit of space there, but not very much. But <clears throat> you'll see that I'll get in trouble as soon as I go to put this thing into the pen. Um, so this time when I put it in, I'm just going to go ahead and put the wrench in place. I don't want to screw the piston out too much because then it could fall out and I would have to start over again. But here I go. I'm going to screw it into place going counterclockwise. And if I have the piston in too far, if I have that screw in too far to the screw bolt, it's going to go up all the way, but then this, the piston is actually hitting the, the um, connector before the cap is able to grab onto the back of the pen. And where that's really going to be a problem is if you post your pen at all. Because if you have that mechanism up in there, sure, you can get just a little tiny bit more ink capacity, which maybe that's your preference. Uh, but if I go to post the thing, um, it's going to be really loosey-goosey back here if that knob, if that end cap is not able to actually seal onto the back. So if you want to fix that, what you got to do is you got to take the whole mechanism out again. You're kind of um, going to have to backtrack a little bit. It's not as easy to um, undo it as it is to do it in the first place. So I found here that I went a little too far. And when you do that, the way to, the way to correct it, it's a little easier to, to go too far than it is to <laughs> go backwards and undo it. Uh, but I'll show you how here. Okay, so we've been kind of clicking and notching it down as we've been unscrewing the pen. Um, so what I want to do is I want to take the end cap and unscrew it in a counterclockwise motion and keep going just a little bit until I'm able to pull that screw out until it lets go. And because I went too far, I want to then go back just a little bit. Okay, so go clockwise just a hair until I can get it back into place. Okay, so there I went a little too far, but I'd rather go too far than put the whole thing back in the pen and find that I didn't actually fix the problem. Uh, so now I've got to get it a little further back in, and I'm just going to go back to my clicking motion once again. Okay, so there's one, and then it looks like I've got enough to do one more. Click. There we go. That looks good. That looks like what I want. Okay, so then I'm going to go unscrew it a little bit, take my wrench, stick it into the pen, and going in a counterclockwise motion, I'm going to thread it back in. Okay, when you're threading it in, you don't want to go super tight. You just want to go enough so that it stops. Screw it down, screw it all the way back up. And I can definitely feel where the end cap is grabbing onto the back of the pen. I've only got minimal space here between my seal and my connector. I'm going to get maximum ink capacity here, and it's going to work just as it should out of the box. You should have been able to pick up a trick or two from this video, but in case I forgot anything, or if you still have any questions, be sure to hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or my blog in any of the comments. Thanks so much for watching and spending time with me today, and right on.